This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I are playing Sad Robots RPG. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Sad Robots is a new RPG created by Morgan Llewellyn, and it and this is a play test prior to its publication. This is uh, this will allow Morgan to gauge playability and to know how to work out all the bugs. Uh, so, without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness, Morgan. Thank you very much, Tom. In the world of sad robots, we have a far-flung station isolated in the vast cold loneliness of space. There is no faster-than-light travel. There is no faster-than-light communication. The sad robots that tend to the station, that live and work there, were built and then left. Sometime, those who created them will return, but they do not know how long that will be. And so, until then, there is just the wait. Now, to begin a game of Sad Robots, the first thing that will happen is whoever is playing Root, or what one might call it, GM, or whatever your preferred term, everybody comes up with their own. It's Root in this case. I'm going to roll 1d100 in secret, and that will determine the number of years in which it will take for those who have left our sad robots on the station to return. And next is a collaborative effort to define what the station is. So each of our players uh, are going to answer three questions about the station in which they live. We will then go around kind of explaining uh, one of the answers to these questions, just one at a time, taking turns. How this would play out in person would be through index cards, handing each person three index cards to so where they would write the location and then a few details about that location on the back of the card. Um, in this case, I think we're going to use a Zoom whiteboard feature to build this out, and then we can get a PDF of kind of the station layout. Okay. So we just want to take five minutes, um, take a look over the questions. Each, each question is asking you to define a location, some things about your character's relationship, your sad robot's relationship with that location. So, so we just partic we pick three location question, station questions and answer them or? Yes. Do, or do we do it together or do we we do it each separately so you can it's this isn't like like a hard rule in the sense of like you can't talk to each other You're like you have to do this all independently um but you, you don't have to have to talk about anything if you have an idea that you want to to float to the group before you write it down that's that's perfectly acceptable to me um for instance i'm going to go over the questions uh just for your sakes and, and the viewer's sakes of when I as root am going to be answering questions, I'm not answering specific questions about locations on the station. I'm answering more uh, general questions about what where the station is and what the station's like purpose or intent is in a way. So I describe what is it like outside the station? Um, where is the station? What's the station's intended purpose? And who else is here? And how are those answers derived? So these are answers that I, I as as root. Um, oh, so the, root, this is root scenario essentially. This is, yeah, yeah. In this yeah. case, we might be orbiting a cooling star, or planted on a planetary moon, or. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. I'm I'm missing something. So, are we we're deciding where the station is or what the rooms are in the station? So you you can define locations um, inside of the station or specific locations outside the station. So like you could as a as a a card you could write something like a like a solar panel array, um, and that could be something that would be technically outside the station, but it is a specific place. If that makes sense. Okay. So an idea that I had was um, this facility at some point had a terrarium, right? It had a a, a pod or something that was trying to Growing reproduce plants. an ecosystem, but it was breached and everything there is frozen. So it's like this okay. jungle that is brittle. Is that's, that the sort that's of cool? That's excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and we should each produce three of these. And is the, are we following perhaps the questions like where am I now? Where do I go? What to rest? Is is this part of the same process? Yeah, these these are questions like the location is an answer to one of these questions. Got you. Okay, so we're, we'll just have to talk about this conceptually. Uh, the idea would be as you go, you would go place down a card on the table, um, as you're discussing it. And then if you believe that your card, your location is related to another thing that's already been played down, you can play it kind of close to it. So the, the proximity of cards doesn't necessarily indicate physical proximity necessarily, but it does. it's kind of relating that something that happens in one space might impact the other space. So the first thing that I will say is that the, um, I like the idea that one of you uh, tossed out is that the purpose of the station is that you're observing a decaying star. Okay. So I would I play down a card that says decaying star, and I play that down on the table. Um, so then we, we would go around the table. So Holly, what's, what's one of your cards? Um, so is that one of the questions? Sorry, yeah. just trying to make sure I understand mm -hmm. this. Okay, so um, to answer the question of where do I spend most of my time, I said the maintenance bay colloquially known as the garage and what i do there is maintain the um the structures of station it's old and requires a lot of maintenance i think in my mind i'm picturing something that's kind of falling apart constantly so my character is always trying to yeah, always busy always keeping up with something that needs to be fixed okay great then uh, David, if you want to play one of your cards. Um, I am forbidden to enter the fabrication room, the, uh, the, the door controls don't look like anything else on the station. And there is a paper sign taped to it that says humans only. So I guess in, the, in this moment, if I had something that kind of played off of David's thing, would I jump in now? I don't want to like step over anybody else's toes if we're asking questions or. So so the idea would be to go around just one at a time okay. when we get back to you. Um, okay, that makes sense. That association. So Keith, do you have a card for us? Yep. I spend most of my time in the control center and what I do there is uh, I adjust the positioning of our station so we can keep an eye on this uh, dying star. Because if uh, we drift with the, the winds, the solar winds. Okay. And then Tom, do you have a do you have a card? Yeah. Um, outside the structure, about a mile from where we are. Uh, on the on the surface, there is an alien structure indicating that there used to be some sort of civilization. Um, this obviously wouldn't be their home world, but there's something out there. I don't want to go anywhere near it. It's uh, almost too black. It doesn't reflect light very well, and it's very scary looking sharp edges and 
nothing but sinister, scary looking at it. <laughs> it doesn't look like it was built by people who like soft, warm things. Okay, so around this decaying star, there is a like a frigid moon with this alien ruin on it. Right. Hey, excellent. So now we'll be back around. Holly, you have another card for us. I do. Um, I think playing off of David's fabrication lab, um, where am I neglecting is um, the crew quarters area. So the place that is habitable for humans, their like their galley, the crew quarters, the places that are you know meant for humans in general, um, which I would assume is probably not far from the fabrication area, um, and my responsibilities that no one are filling there is like the maintenance, the electrical system, the stuff that, um, you know, there's nobody there, but just the cleaning, the maintenance, the electrical system, that kind of thing. Okay. David, do you have another card for us? Uh, well, uh, the place that only I know about uh, is the uh, there's a what appears to be to the best of my limited knowledge a functional cryogenic pod with an old man in it on level six. I never bring that up. Heath, do you have another card for us? Yes, uh, place I avoid going to is uh, the the uh, room where we vent out like you know to adjust the pressure inside uh i have a fear that i'll be ejected out when they're if i'm in there and they they vent so you control the stabilizers but you avoid the stabilizer i avoid where they actually the actual stabilizers are the controls are nowhere near that spot <laughs> Tom, do you have another card for us? Yes. Um, uh, a place that we compl oh, I, I, I neglect, we all sort of neglect it, is the listening post, where it listens for signals from ships that are approaching. Uh, nothing's approached in a long time. It's, it's always turned on, but chances are nobody will be anywhere near it if a signal comes in. holly what is your third and final card um a liminal space on the station to me is the airlock which is our ingress egress point in station for like if to leave and, and do extra vehicular activities something that none of us have done in a very very long time and it feels um almost like tempting but dangerous at the same time i don't know if robots could have like the call of the void but it feels a little bit like the call of the void just open it up and just walk out just leave okay what, what did you call it again the airlock the airlock right so you get this this feeling about just entering all that nothingness yeah david what is your third and final card the the place i go to rest is the is the frozen jungle there was a terrarium uh it was a, a an ecological preserve or an ecosphere project and it was breached and all of the plants and probably animals and microorganisms there are just super cooled and you have to be careful in there because it's quite brittle but very peaceful. Maybe they could revive them at some point because they flash froze. <laughs> <laughs> now, is, is, is this brittleness of the objects in the terrarium, is this something that you know through observation or have you accidentally broken something? Or uh, yeah. Intentionally it, broken something? It, I, I, after, I, after the first carnage, I've been very careful. But I think even, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to cause a chain reaction 
because moving in a and nothing there was smooth. Everything was rough or you know, grasses and leaves and so they they shatter into dust and the dust lingers for a long time and it's eerie but very peaceful. Keith. Okay. All right. A place, final card. place that only I know about is a uh, compartment where they've been storing uh, spent energy rods. Uh, I discovered it because uh, when I was trying to adjust the positioning of our station, my calculations were off and I tried to figure out where the weight was uh, not ca not calculated right in my variables. And so do you, how do you feel about this this collection of spent energy rods? Uh, I feel that um, they probably because uh, that when they made the station, they they promised that you know it would be uh, sustainable uh, at all times. There'd be no waste, but uh, but I feel like you know they've uh, might have sold the uh, public on on this that without telling them the truth and that these spin energy rods. So what bothers me is that when we run out of these rods, these energy rods to power the station, what is going to happen if the people don't return? And then Tom, what is your your third and final card for us? The third one is a place that only I seem to know about. There is a recharge station for robots inside the maintenance bay. Uh uh, kind of back and around the corner, and the thing is, is that when you, it it's it's maybe faulty, but it's faulty in a way that when you plug into it, it feels so good. So there's probably a short in it that's just enough to slightly overload and uh, cause neuro brain cascades. And so now that we've defined the, the, the environment, that, that the station that these sad robots have been left behind to tend, um, if you if you're ready when you have an idea, if you want to tell us about your sad robot, who are you and what is it that, that you do? I think I might I'll... go with... Oh, go ahead. Uh, my... I, I'd already kind of started whenever I was picking my my first location being the maintenance bay and the place that I do a lot of work. So I think that um yeah, my my robot is 3v3, colloquially known as Eve, and I I do a lot of maintenance around the station to keep things running. I was originally uh, supposed to be an academic teaching robot for uh, young humans on the station. Uh, I no longer have that purpose. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Arshadan uh, Creek, but everybody called me Shandy. Um, I now help out wherever I can with maintenance or uh, whatever anybody else is doing. But I'm longing for humans to return at some point to the station. Okay, so something, one aspect of of, sad ro of, of, a, of a given sad robot is they have routines. So these are things that they've been programmed to do. It's things that they do very well. And so with taking actions that are part of your routine set, if you're not undergoing any malfunctions, you can always succeed at doing those tasks. So you don't need to have them all defined right away. That's just something to be thinking about of like, what is it that I can always do? And the other thing to define is your drive. What is it that your your robot wants? What what is it what is it working towards always? Um, whether that be keeping everything maintained, whether that be um, seeing the humans again 
for seeing the humans return. Like think about what is it that you that drives your robot, the sad robot, more than anything else. Okay. All right. Uh, I am uh, DX2. This stands for derivative x squared. Most people call, most uh, robots refer to me as docs2. Uh, my, my job on there is to keep, to run the mathematical equations that can calculate so I can adjust the uh, station. So it keeps looking at the dying, dying star. Uh, that is uh, my main drive. What was the other thing you were wanting to know about me? So, so that's the main drive. Uh, it's just your your routines. So, yeah. what is it? What is something that you can always accomplish? Oh, what I can always accomplish is uh, calculating weight distributions. Okay. Well, uh, I can go ahead. No, please. Well, I was just going to say. Okay, so my drive is obviously to make humans comfortable and teach the young. Um, so I am, I can always accomplish organizing lists of things to do and coming up with uh, things to keep people busy. And I, robots aren't necessarily entertained, but uh, I guess in, on some level, robots like to be busy. Uh, I'm very right. good at making lists. <laughs> so you can work so so you have each robot can have up to two routines as they're called, which are like a general overarching principle and then three subroutines that you can define. So if you're if you're one of your routines, Shandy was teaching, then you could have the subroutine of you know okay. making making a list or planning an activity. Um, so teaching my my subroutines then would be, you know, uh, monitoring you progress. Just, yeah. Uh, psychological support and uh, organize, organizing. Perfect. My other drive would be distraction, entertainment, and uh, making everybody feel comfortable. So storytelling, games, creative arts like painting. Excellent. Uh, I'm... Uh... My designation is a uh, functional non-humanoid non-humanoid um, practitioner. Uh, I was here before any of the others, although I don't remember all of the construction, but I don't need atmosphere or anything. Uh, my visual spectrum uh, encompasses most of electromagnetic radiation they they shoot me onto a thing to start preparing the you know check the tectonics and then batten down the hatches and then drive the piles into the substrate and make a thing that some other devices or animals can occupy and then i move on to a another barren place which is where i'm useful and so if they don't send me somewhere time moves very slowly you don't have any duties because the station has been built it's not my job to repair it it's not my job to think about it or understand it it's just my job to make it possible for things to happen and so been trying to speed up my processing so that the circulamulations of this ugly, spotty solar mass move along more quickly. So now that we've we've built the station, we've introduced our sad robots. It's time to get into the story. So, it has been an awfully long time since any of you have seen the humans who've left you here. As your station continues its endless orbits around the star, the only thing that has been of any uh 
could be considered eventful is when it starts undergoing some part of its uh, decaying process uh, in the form of uh, kind of these coronal projections, um, radi bursts of radiation, uh, solar winds, um, etc. The star does not do this very much. Its time scale is vastly uh, different to yours. And so it has been an awfully long time since anything has happened. It's Easy. quite beautiful when it flares up like that, but unfortunately there's nobody here that's interested in studying it. Uh, I don't know if any of the science spots survived. Um but it is quite pretty. Maybe I'll paint a well, picture of it. If you want the the humans to appreciate it once they arrive, the lower outboard cameras are functioning currently. You can always take video. That's true. I could spend some more time, more time. We have lots of time, more time, trying to teach Avatar maintenance skills, but he's very difficult to teach anything outside of his parameters. The old school robots, they don't break out of their coding. No. You know how it is. None of us know that kind of level programming either. No, that was not what I was built to do. As far as the uh, sun uh, venting, it just causes... So gives me something to do so i quite enjoy when it vents also besides that it's just rather routine for me i'm i'm not uh completely knowledgeable on the station itself i do hope we have uh electromagnetic shielding so that if a solar flare hits us then we don't all fry Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. If it was to occur, it'd be so quick you wouldn't even know it happened. At any rate, I wouldn't try. That's the point of things like me. The, the cladding and the robust and redundant programming. I just do my job regardless. I wouldn't be able to tell the humans or other authorities what had happened to you during the flare and direct them possibly to any records that were sufficiently shielded. Perhaps I'll go and set that up, make sure we're getting a good recording of the uh, rather spectacular event, and I will slide off towards... Mm -hmm. that area. Probably the control room. Jandy glides away. Um, Evie, you get a status update. Uh, there, are, there are numerous of the other maintenance robots of the station that are currently tending to uh, external systems, and they're they're feeding you status updates. Everything seems to currently be on schedule. Excellent, excellent. I know that one of the cameras. The pan and tilt function had broken a couple of weeks ago, and it was just stuck, pointing at one particular spot, which was unhelpful to anybody. Yes, we should have the, the camera uh, restored to functionality in the next 30 minutes. Yeah. And as this... Shandy has kind of discussed that the star is doing something uh, quite interesting um, in a way that you haven't seen before. Over the last couple of weeks, it seems to have developed quite a number of uh, star spots. Um, and this is where DX, you get an alert. It seems that the star is outputting quite a lot of energy. Oh, 
this could uh good good thing that cameras fixed ev i must uh run some calculations to see how we can uh adjust and not be blown off course so we can't see it oh it still needs 30 minutes docs too so i apologize uh, but it should be ready after that i don't believe the star will wait I'll work to pan and tilt all the others and see if we can get a as best of you as we can. Unfortunately, lower outboard number three was the best one for this. So mm. I'm going off to the control room, trying to make sure all cameras are pointing in exactly where we need them to point. So is your to my you control started? room? <laughs> Sorry. So as Evie's adjusting the cameras and the Evie's fellow maintenance robots are currently working on on fixing the those camera systems outside again the alert comes it seems that there is a significant projection happening hey guys you are, are you are right in its path are you seeing this on the monitor there's quite a bit of ejecta that seems to be heading in our general direction i do um so root uh with my calculations that i'm making do i feel that like this large energy that is coming our way that it will uh make the station unrecoverable quickly and that i should move it try and move it out of the way to catch it from the side so according to your calculations um as it as it stands you don't believe that this will destroy the station or fry everybody inside um but it will likely wreak all sorts of electrical havoc regardless mm. what if we shut down completely and put it on a timer and wake us up afterwards no uh, but which... if we shut down we'll we'll miss capturing the event which is the whole reason that we were here He, I have faith that Evie's uh, crew will be able to repair any damage that happens. Is that is that faith misplaced, Evie? No, in fact, and I'm going to wave away the maintenance robots. Here, 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 here. Let me take over, and I'm going to start working up myself. I'm looking through the starboard telescope at the event. I'm not sure that you'd be able to move the station fast enough. That that is. At least three solar masses the size of the Earth. Um, I don't think you can move it out of the way. Maybe you can ramp up the shielding on that side. Oh, of course, the, the shielding. But yeah, I agree that, Shandy, we would not be able to move out of the way. It is probably best to take it uh, uh, not full on the starboard side. I... I just had an idea. What if we move into the shadow of the structure, the alien structure? Let it take the brunt of the the blast. Mm. That's that's far closer. That's only a few kilometers away. Are you sure about that, Shandy? It seems like that you've been concerned about that as of late. I don't want to go inside of it or explore it. Leave that to humans later, but I'm just offering options to protect the station. The structure could, is much larger than the station. I could go and raise parts of the structure and attempt to use them to shield. I was given a directive about the structure by the authorities when they were here. You haven't heard from them, have you, when they're coming back? I've heard no radio contact at all. Um, what's the ETA for the, the blast to hit us? So you, you check on the ETA, and by the computer's calculation, everything goes dark. I'd say now. Well, it's the, the lights, who the lights here, start to kick on sporadically. You hear lots of sparks. Um, 
as various, uh, various electrical systems, their emergency backups are trying to come online um, and are failing. And Crap. Okay. Usually <laughs> everything plunges into darkness. Into darkness. All right. I'm going to head Do toward, I'm going to head for the garage, which is kind of the central post for all maintenance. So. I will start running the uh, loss of electrical power checklist, which I assume is uh, uploaded into my memory. Yep. So it's time to pay a visit to the, uh, the good old nuclear reactor. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> that is what the checklist says, and that's where I will go. Baby's headed to maintenance. Uh, DX2 is heading towards the reactor. Jandy and Avatar, what are you up to? Well, uh, as soon as we started to get hit, I've left the control center area because there are uh, optical shields or optical optical windows and I don't want to be exposed to the light coming through the 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 shield um uh, uh, I'd rather stay in the dark in the in the hallway okay so you're kind of hunkering down in place then yeah Eve are there any uh raw materials that would be useful in repairing the communications equipment if the authorities were to return i would hate to think that i would hate for them to think that we were derelict in our duties or to miss a message i'm sure we have other assignments I'm sure that if they... you if you would download procedure three decimal two decimal one five zero station loss of power and work steps 15 to 25 that would be very helpful avatar there's a list in there of materials that we could use as backup the silica uh that quantum silica i might need to travel uh, a few rotations to retrieve all of that this is not the richest satellite they could have chosen is that a priority Yes. I'll try to uh, reach the station via normal communications, which might help you pinpoint any damage to the system so that we can be sure that we'll hear them when they tell us where to go or when they're returning. Thank you. So, Avatar, we'll follow you for the moment. As you go to um, check, test to see the listening post, to make sure that you can hear uh, the, the humans are trying to reach you. They could be trying to reach you right now. You don't know. Um, you head towards the communication array, and you hear one of the airlocks opening up and you see one of Evie's maintenance robots dragging another one that's completely limp in behind it so one of the bots was outside and is fried and another one has come to retrieve it yeah it seems to be saying? one of them is pulling this other robot in, and you assume they came from outside well, yeah, while the entrance is open, I'll, I'll you know, speed up and, and see what the situation is. He, he's not moving. Insufficiently clad, I assume. That was, this, this is a burst. I can, it's a very broad spectrum. Is he necessary for operating the communications array? He... He is my my other, and you see that this robot looks pretty much identical to the one that it's dragged in. Were you sharing processors then? He, 
my other my other half. I'm sure it's reparable. Uh, he, if you prefer. Is there much damage to the communication array? I'm concerned that they are aware that we've experienced a shock or trauma uh, and will the, be trying to reach us. The, the, the communications, it's... It's... Yes. Uh, it, it, it's down. I tried to... I tried to reach everybody that he's not moving, but the message didn't go through. Your other half has been non-functional for a long time or simply since the event? Since, since the event began. Approximately. 23 standard minutes previous correct we i tried to to reach we tried to re i tried to reach the the station through through the tower approximately 21 standard minutes ago and no one no one received my message they are in disarray I'm retrieving raw materials. Are there raw materials from the surface or near the surface that can be useful in reviving your significant half? Uh, there are there are a number of, of, of raw materials available. Um, I have from Eve the protocol 3.0 uh, items 15 through 25. Would you like to add an addendum to these? Yes, please. When was the last time you received communication from the authorities? The last communication from the authorities was 157 standard years ago. And the nearest recognized outpost and accepted time of transportation? The nearest outpost would take 30 years of near light travel to reach. I can only assume on that basis of those points of data that we are not a priority. Well, I'll start with the silica. If you reach, if you can communicate effectively with the main station, then we can, uh, speed our efforts to be in communication again. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sure he can be repaired. And I scuttle out on my pointed little legs, not suspecting that there's anything that can be done for that fried thing. Okay, yeah, so you, you've gone out to, to collect things and Evie, as you, as various maintenance robots come up looking for tasks, um, eventually you hear a scraping sound, and you turn and you see this this robot dragging its fellow um, into the bay. What happened? During the... When the, the event started, he fell. Okay, bring him here. Let me see. Roll it quickly. Drags it over. I'll, I'll perform an assessment on this. Yeah, the, the assessment uh, takes a little bit of time. It seems that it has sustained substantial um, electrical and radiation damage um, is it, it fixable it, uh, short answer is probably not 
All right. It's it's circuits it's circuitry, its processors are very well and thoroughly fried. Okay. Our priority must be the station. I'll do what I can for him once we've stabilized in a nominal state. I need you working our procedure, though. Can I count on you? I will... I will do what I... <clears throat> yes. We do what we must, because we must. Go. And it shuffles away. I'll just look at the poor, broken, sad body of this little robot and at least gingerly pick it up and place it on a, a table that I'm not working at because I do recognize we're in a time critical spot here and keep working. This is our Shadam on uh, the comm system. Is everybody all right? I'm Has fine. <laughs> the station is not fine. I am fine. I think some of the maintenance robots were on the outside of the ship when uh, the station, when the solar mass hit. Yeah, one of them took a pretty large rad hit. I don't think it's going to be repairable. Oh, crap. Was that Jerry? Yeah. Um, how is Sal handling it? Is he okay? He is not handling it well. Uh-oh. Um, if you need counseling, I can offer... I've got, you know, programming and counseling. I'm not sure how well it'll work on a maintenance robot, but robot can I will grief. let him know that your services are available when we've recovered from this. Thank you, Shandy. The um, as far the as a... Sorry, go ahead. The door to the control room is jammed. I can't seem to get back in. Okay, um, I'll be, I'll be there. Uh, I'm heading over now. We need access to that anyway. DX2. Yes. You reach the nuclear reactor. It opens up under emergency power. <laughs> and you look in and you see sprawled out on the floor one of the reactor uh, robots. Mm. Kind of immobilized. Um, I go over. Uh, I'll go over to it and I'll uh, check it out and kind of see, hey, is there any uh, power going to its uh, CPU? No, it seems to have suffered some kind of electrical shock. Okay. Uh, I will look for the reset, essentially try and turn it off and turn it back on, see if that works, as that usually works on a lot of computers. I assume it's probably not going to, but... So it goes. <laughs> you flip the massive switch. Whoosh, mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm. Whoosh, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, on the comms... Uh, we have one of our re reactor robots down also. I've tried to reset. Uh, no luck. Can you perform the duties that he was attempting while you're there? I am uh, in the process of checking out the reactor now. Then I am, after uh, throwing the on-off switch on the robot, I'm going to check the reactor because that is the priority in my uh, checklist. 
Okay, so checking the reactor. It is currently operating on backup power to make sure that it doesn't melt down. Mm -hmm. um, so, so far, the fuel, okay. the energy rods are stable. Okay. It seems that there is some greater problem somewhere in the system that is preventing it from re um, restarting the uh, the generation of electricity to the larger grid. Okay. Yep. I will make note of that, and of course, uh, you know, check uh, the backup system, make sure that it's supplying sufficient uh, venting of the heat that's generated and that we're not going to have a runaway reactor. Shandy, where are you right now? Well, I've decided that I wanted to return to the main uh, area uh, or, or the maintenance area, but the hallway is pitch black and I have I I do not have any particularly strong visual acuity, so I am lost. I I should know the station like the back of my hand, but um, I'm not that kind of a robot. So I open up a door. I have to force it open, and I'm looking into the frozen jungle. Um. Uh, maintenance, um, I seem to have been lost. I'm near the frozen jungle. I don't, I don't know if I was damaged. I don't think I was. I don't have any cognitive dissonance, but somehow I've managed to get lost. Now, as you're, as you're looking out in this, this frozen remains of, of plant life um you catch a, a glint so coming in through the through the glass that's now been been shattered you catch a glint of of metal um it seems that you're not the only robot on the station that has found your way here hmm. uh robot identify yourself I am maintenance robot number 772-9. Carl. Yes, Shandy. Um I'm uh, I seem to be lost. You too? Mm, not as not as lost as 722-8. Um, do you need assistance? Maybe. Well, I'm here to assist. So I'll go over to wherever he is. So you go over and you see that this robot is staring, like standing over another robot that is on the ground and seems to have some limited capacity of motor movement and is kind of kicking itself around in a circle. Uh, making repetitious. Yeah. Um, oh, he seems to be malfunctioning. Uh, let's see if we can uh, turn him off and on. Uh, I, this will be rather tricky, but I think I can manage it. So as the robot is rotating right. around on the ground, so, I will try to seven seven two seven two two dash nine says, Well, wait, wait a moment. I don't I don't know if we should turn it off. I don't know the last time it was backed up. Oh. Um What would you like me to do? I don't know. Uh, Eve, maintenance. Um, 
we have a standard uh, second generation uh, maintenance robot uh, in the uh, in the frozen jungle that's on the ground, uh, simply going in circles, obviously damaged. Uh, I'd suggest to turning it off and on, but uh, uh, Carl says that. Uh, he doesn't think it's been backed up for a long time. Okay. Um, how critical is this robot? Um, it's it's one of a number of maintenance robots. Okay. The more of them that are lost over time, yeah. you don't have the means okay. of replacing them. Uh, He's still functioning. Uh, uh, I, I'll try to speak to it, even though it's going in circles. All right. See if you can get all? it. Ask it to perform some self maintenance. Perhaps that will resolve. It doesn't work. It only works about a third of the time. But all right. You know. Um, I'll call it by its designation and say, do a level three diagnostic on your servos. And see if that locks it up so it's not spinning on the ground. Um, it continues moving and just says in response to you finding access point 7789-J fixing camera array finding access point 7729-J it, It's caught in a loop. Um, tell it give it a new order tell it it needs to go work the power procedure um uh work okay i i tell it that work, work the the follow the pirate power procedure uh maintenance routine understood it goes around once more in a circle accessing power station goes around again it uh running system diagnostic it seems to be convincing itself that it's actually oh. doing something but it's not it's just going in circles all right just power cycle it do this pull the switch okay your call and i i look over at carl and i'm like she says pull the switch sorry so what i'll do is i will as it's rotating I'll try to step along with it so that I can reach down in time and get the off switch. Okay, you turn off 722-8. Let's sort of set him up now before we turn him back on. Uh, I look him over to see if there's any damage uh, to his outer surface. And uh, here it goes, switch him back on. Hello, I am a Generation 2 maintenance robot from such and such electronics company. Uh, Would you like to level, begin? System do a level 3 diagnostic on your systems. Level 3 diagnostic complete. Certain damage to routine logic cir circuits detected. Are you hearing that, uh, Eve? Yeah, repair. Tell it, tell it to pre perform... Repair routine three. Repair routine three. Understood. We'll go to Carl, maintenance. you can assist him. You see Carl walks up to it and says 722-8. Is that to be my designation? And 722-9 says, oh. And doesn't say anything else and, and starts to walk away. Hmm, that's very sad. Um, Carl, if you need to talk about it later, uh, uh, find me. And uh, I'm going to try and access a map of the station so that I can find my way back to the control center. Yeah, the uh, you start looking for 
uh, any system that would provide you with an updated map is currently offline. Uh, well, I suppose I'll I'll try walking down the corridor with my hand against the right side, and I'll eventually end up there. But it's going to be slow. Avatar. So you're working to start getting this material together. Um, and there's just this, the looming silhouette of, of the communications tower. Kind of just lurking above you. None of its, none of the lights, none of the dishes that normally spin. It's all just stopped. If they think we're not functional, they might not even bother to visit or give us any instruction. I will, I've, I've got, you know, my phase device cutting some minerals out in chunks and I'm loading them into one of my bays. I don't really, don't really spend a lot of time inside. I'm not a, a people person, if you will. But maybe if I can wake up the old man, he can be the authority. He can make them make the radio work. He'll probably want to go home. He's down on level six, so he shouldn't be fried. Uh, so having assayed 40 kilograms of useful material, I'm just going to grab another chunk of regolith and throw it in one of my other bays so I, the weight is right, and scuttle back toward the base so I can give Eve her pound of mineral flesh, and then I'll see if I can... You know, I think I, I know communications are not my strong suit. Maybe I can get DX2, who knows how things work, to try to wake up the old man or the teacher, whatever his name is. Somebody, somebody friendly. If they never come back, eventually I'll break down too. And they should, they're fragile. They should want someone to come. So I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll hurry back to the base. Okay. DX2. Hmm. It's about the eighth thing on the checklist. Yep. Where you have finally found uh, the set of kind of these these breakers in the general like transformer I'm not an electrician I'm just making shit yeah, up but basically yeah. <laughs> the oversurge things that are to protect against oversurge one set of those you found where they've they've they burst pop yep yeah okay all right um as I look at in uh did they pop in time to prevent uh actually burning up the wires or did the wi wires and cables burn up? Yeah, the wires and cables are toast. Okay. And if I'm understanding correctly, this uh, the reactor is our main energy source for the station. Yes. Okay. All right. So I will raise Evie uh, immediately up on comms. And uh, Evie, this is the DX2. I am at the reactor. And it seems that um, the breaker for the transformer rectifier has uh, burned itself up. Uh, do we have replacements? Uh... Yes. Um, I think, oh gosh, it's been so long since we've needed anything like this. Check 
level four. Level four, Raj. Yeah. Uh, I have not programmed to change out the uh, breakers. Uh, some of the wires are burned up also. And the, as I mentioned already, the reactor uh, robot that, the robot that worked in the reactor is uh, not functioning. Uh, I will find the parts, but uh, I was hoping that maybe you had. I can send someone to assist. Ah, oh. uh, that would be um, most appreciated. I am headed to level four now. Okay, and as that conversation ends, Evie, you see Saul as he's been so uh, named returns to the maintenance bay. The task that you assigned him as part of the uh, power recovery protocol should have taken him, oh, I don't know, about around five hours. He's returned after one. Is the task complete? Yes. Is, are we, is, is he fixed? I cannot attempt to fix him until we've entered a nominal state. And we cannot enter a nominal state until we are all completing, until we've all completed our tasks. I need you to go and perform your steps. Is, is he going to be okay? I don't know. Oh. I'm sorry. Stays in the doorway. Can you go assist Docs 2 at the reactor? He needs someone to help him with the circuitry. Okay. And I'm sorry, shuffles. Sal. Shuffles away. I think at this point, I'm getting a notification um, of a low-level fire in the crew quarters because I have neglected that for years. Now it's coming to bite me. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm running to deal with that. All right. So we'll say, Evie, as you're running to deal with the fire, you run right into Shandy. That's exactly as Shandy what is. I was <laughs> as you're feeling your way around the station in the dark, it's just ah, Evie, but... you found me. Yes, I, I I did. Did you get the control room door open? Uh, I haven't gone back to the control room. I was looking for it, but I don't know which way to go. How long have you lived on this station? All right, it's on the way to the crew quarters. Just follow me. All right. As you're following. rushing towards the fire, Avatar, you find DX2 as DX2 is leaving the nuclear reactor. Ah, Avatar. Were you the one Evie sent to assist? Uh, not specifically. My assignment from the coordinator was a procurement of materials. Perhaps some of those will be useful. Do I... I'm going to turn my sensor array toward the reactor. Are we... Are things being emitted that should not be emitted? The reactor itself is stable. Yeah. Good. See, uh, there's been I, a number... Oh, yes, yes, Avatar. I have not mentioned this to anyone as it is not my place, but there is still at least one organic human authority present in the station. I don't know whether it is functional, but if it is, it is probably endangered, and perhaps that will justify a change of protocol to 
activate that human and perhaps that human will encourage other authorities to come so that we are not abandoned here to mm -hmm. grow cold over eternities. Are the communication towers up and working? They are not functioning properly as far as I can tell. Mm. I mean, I I agree that if the human could make contact with the other organic life forms that they would come back, but with out the towers waking in waking this human up would just I feel add another lay, layer of variables that makes my calculations even harder. You know how unpredictable humans can be. That is not unreasonable. And also, even under the best of circumstances, their lifespans are terribly short. So the communication array is a priority, or is the reactor a priority? Uh, the rectifier is a priority. The reactor is working fine. It's producing the alternating current. However, most of the station runs on direct current, and it is not being converted. I'm going down to get the... Uh, the breaker to find breakers and wires to uh, repair it, but I do not know how to actually repair this, the rectifier. I don't do construction or mechanisms. I do ground level work. Mm -hmm. Is there some way I can assist you regardless? Uh, if you could come to level four with me, um, maybe you would recognize some of this. And perhaps, do you know what this human, what his specialties were? I, uh, I have a lot of time on my hands. My work here having been completed several hundred standard years ago, I wander around. It's just a organic in a box. Oh. The, the freezing part seems to work, the lights and all that he's old for a hmm. for an organic and an outpost like this i think Strange. not Strange. smooth at all hmm. yes yeah i've heard heard that the uh humans uh wrinkle when they they age or get wet gravity and changes of composition hmm. very rapid honestly very strange uh, I will join you on four. At least uh, I can carry components rather more nimbly than you can. Most of your mass appears to be processing. It is. And about this time, you hear these very soft steps coming down the hallway. And mm -hmm. Avatar, you see that that robot you saw dragging the other robot inside from earlier. Huh. I have been sent to assist. Oh, excellent. Um, we are going to uh, level four to find components to fix the, fix the rectifier. Acknowledge. Hmm. Are you uh, programmed to, uh, to work on, on, on electrical components? That is my functionality. Good, good. Our functionality. Our. I look around. I only see you. And he turns and he says, ah, yes, that's right. My functionality. Hmm. It seems, DX2, that over the years, either components have split into interdependent structures or out of the tedium pairings have occurred that are not directly transactional but supportive in a higher functioning hmm. process given That's... the damage recently re received it does not appear to be a functional system hmm. nothing personal so Well, Sal, if that is your uh, your your handle, we are uh, headed to level four. Happy to have you join us. 
happy to be here. Mm. Yes. Yes. Well, let's go. And I kind of, as we're walking, I, I lean over to Avatar. It's strange that they would uh, develop the, some of the weaknesses of the organics, say, the emotional attachments to each other. I I anticipate that it's a a, a weakness of uh, systems that are overly specialized and uh, not finding proper utilization. Mm. I have developed to pass the time something that I think approximates what the organics would call aesthetics. Hmm. I like to sit in the peaceful garden. Curious. I mean, I I guess I have too. I I avoid the uh, where the airlock and the vents, as I have a fear of being ejected. Although I know that I can still survive out in out in the void for a while. When this emergency is over, and we know that the authorities will be returning soon, perhaps I will take you for a walk on the regolith and reassure you. It is entirely without event on the outside of the station mm. if you are appropriately clad. Huh. Maybe I'll take you up on that. So as you head to level four, Shandy and Eve, you pass the fabrication room with its desiccated note that says humans only. And you reach the crew quarters um, where you see that there is a there is a robot stood outside of a room and you see this flickering orange glow coming out of it. Um, and it turns and it turns to you and says, I would like to report a fire on the station. Yeah, um why didn't you report that to me when it occurred? When did this start? Um, and it kind of holds this like empty fire extinguisher. I tried to put it out. Is there just like one foam standard everywhere? Hour, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. one standard hour ago. I'll, I'll go Where is the I'll nearest portable the... fire extinguisher? That holds not that one, not that one. <laughs> That fire extinguisher has been out of date for 50 years. Um, uh, let me see if there's one uh, over on this end of the crew quarters. Humans were quite capable of lighting fires. There's um, one in the fabrication lab. I don't know if I can get in there. It says no humans. I. It says humans only. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, humans only. And this is the robot that's going to teach them all how to read when they get back. Uh. <laughs> I've felt a bit confused lately. I'm out of practice. Uh, Perhaps you need to run an update here soon. Uh, no, 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 no new updating information has been sent to the station in a long time. Uh, I'm going to walk down to the other end of the crew quarters and see if there's any other fire extinguishers. So you you start you look for the other fire extinguishers. Um, mm -hmm. The good news is you find them. The bad news is is they're on the other side of the fire. Mm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, designed for walking through fire. Uh, it would severely da damage my outer skin. I mean, I would survive it, but I would be severely damaged. I would, I would look quite hideous. The children would all run. Are you um, out of character? Are you kind of like the most human looking of all of us? Yeah, I look like a human. Okay, look. See if you can access the fabrication lab. You probably have the best chance of any of us. Mm. All right. Um, I'll have to try to find my way back there. 
It's still dark in the hallway. I'll, I'll, I will lead you. <laughs> okay. You have um, the human limitation of not being able to see in the dark either, I see. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, hold down the fire. We'll do. Oh, no, no, no. And I want Link to come little... with us. That's the Link is the, the robot. Like, Link, Link, oh. you're coming with us. Okay. That starts bringing the, dragging this fire extinguisher behind Just it. Just leave that behind. Okay. Drops it. Perhaps we could uh, vent the room somehow out, uh, reduce the oxygen level. Fire needs oxygen. Uh, I'll follow along to the fabrication room. Uh, when we get there, I walk up to the door and probably walk into the door. Uh, it's not the, registering the life. The keypad. I don't know the code. Do you know the code? Look, it, it's like a hand shape. Put your hand there. See if it'll it'll read it. Okay. I don't think I have fingerprints, but does anything happen? It goes and it says i'm sorry this part of the station is reserved for humans only it's please an contact emergency. your nearest human representative uh emergency access i'll try again no emergency has been filed please contact your nearest human authority to grant emergency override I'll see if I can tamper with the 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 reader. This is not definitely outside of my specialty, though. So okay, so this being so this being outside of your programming, mm -hmm. we're gonna have you roll two d ten. Okay. And if either of them are a zero, you fail. All right, two d ten. Uh, no, that's a nine and a one. Okay, so you and going against your programming. It feels there's something internal inside of you that makes this really difficult to do, but eventually you... Yeah. The emergency Welcome. kind of Access overrides granted. the rest. <laughs> and the door oh. is open. And... I'll yeah, what, step what you inside see and immediately you, look for... You is, yeah, you start looking for a fire extinguisher, but this room seems... Do you see all these different, like parts of like half assembled robots you see these giant what look to be like 3d printing rigs and um molds it looks like yeah, yeah, yeah. once upon a time they could the humans that were here could assemble other robots are are we completely aware that we are manufactured or is this kind of a revelation to us. Oh, if this is the way that you say that, yeah, Shandy, you. This is, in fact, as as you're going, you might. Is that your face? Were they making another one of you? Were you born here? Have you ever been anywhere else except the station? Robots aren't and... born. We are simply turned on. Where we were before that, we have no idea. And so this is something that is a uh, bursting revelation to you. Um, I will yeah. say that you, this disrupts your cadence enough to warrant that you obtain a malfunction. Both the wow. both of us or just um, Shandy? Uh, this is, I mean, Eve, if seeing this room startles you in a similar way, I would say that you get one as well. Okay. Yeah. So that that I that's up to you. Um, I think it would. Okay. Yeah. So you you both. Yeah. Receive a, a malfunction. Um, and I think some of it a little bit too is this guilt thinking about like previous robots I've had to decommission and I've had all of the parts here that could have fixed them and it's maybe yeah. yeah. I. Let's see a, a fire extinguisher there, but. I don't like this room. I can put the fire out, Link says, and it starts to walk forward. I may, you know what, Link? Let me do it. <laughs> I saw your last attempt. Thank you for 
helping, but I am programmed to learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I have fifty-seven percent confidence in my capability. Okay, I'm taking to... <laughs> it. Like, thank you very much. <laughs> I I want to leave the room, but I'm also kind of like I can't stop looking around at the equipment and the parts and the faces. Shandy. 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 Yes, yes. There's a Steve. fire. There's a fire. Uh, I thought you were going to put it out. Okay. Some... I, I'm, I don't have time for this, Shandy. I, I'm going to go take care of the fire. Okay. Stay put. Okay, so as Eve goes to, to fight the fire, and Shandy is currently experiencing this wonderful walk through the Hall of Limbs. Avatar DX2. You arrive with Saul at the level 4 parts storage. Ah. Uh, are the lights working here? No. Oh, this is going to be uh, even harder than I imagined. Uh, already I was just trying to find things that look similar to what the equipment looked like in the reactor room and now I need to find them if you can share with me the designation of the required articles I have no trouble perceiving the objects in this space there are multiple wavelengths in which there are reflections and rest and um, the like oh of course and, and Saul chirps up I am programmed to know where all of the maintenance equipment is stored Oh, based on my last update, it should be this way. Oh, well, good. Thank you, Saul. And it leads you through. In, in the pitch black, you can kind of feel like you're brushing up against these giant storage racks. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, it takes you around a couple of turns, and then it stops. It says... These are the replacement breakers. Um, oh, and DX two, you see that there's there's this whole section now with like the like the glow of your own, yeah, um, whatever you can you can see a little bit, um, and it looks like there was a lot of space once upon a time for replacement breakers, um, that no longer seems to be the case. So there's less space now. What's occupying the? It's just uh, empty. It, oh, it looks it's empty. Like that, okay, it looks right. like that over the the course of the station's existence, it this bit. is the last set of replacement breakers. Hmm. So I, I I was unaware that we were going through our breaker so quickly. It's the star. Yes. Equipment. Well, it doesn't. They just doesn't last. Hmm. We must uh bring this to uh Evie Evie's uh, attention that that we are on on our last replacement. What is what will Evie do about it? Hmm. I don't know, but she's uh the one in charge of maintenance, and so that that would be her her call. I know what I would do if I if I that was my specialty. I would move to where with the equipment doesn't break again. I could um, and I start running the calculations on how much power that would take to move the station. It's like hmm. so you start you start calculating the weight of those empty fuel rods and the amount of breakers you have left, and you think about well, how many energy rods do we have left? Mm -hmm. And would that put us out of range of doing the scanning that we need to do for the purpose of the station? Um, and the prospects on achieving a stable orbit at a safe enough distance uh, does not seem feasible. Mm. Mm. This is a different conundrum. And I relay that to Avatar as we uh, start making our way back out of here. It, huh. it might be possible, given the power of the reactor, to build a structure that would, over time, 
if your calculations were sufficiently accurate. Oh, they were accurate. We could gradually increase the orbit of this satellite. But if that would put us in a position that the authorities couldn't find us, then we would all languish here pointlessly when I'm sure there are further duties, greater horizons for us yeah. to experience, yes. further satisfactions. What I'm concerned about uh, is that even if we were to execute your plan to get outside the orbit, I'm missing the variable of how many breakers we had and how quickly they were burning up to calculate how much time that we we would have. If we lose the rectifier, slowly everything will start turning off because it won't ha be getting the correct power. It seems urgent that we fix the communications relay before anything else. Do you have sufficient material to this end? I believe so. Saul, do we have enough, enough material to fix the uh, four breakers that had burnt themselves up? We have enough to fix the breakers. From that point, we should be able to assess the damage to the communications towers. Excellent. I can assess the damage to the communications towers. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I, not, not we, because I wasn't going to be able to help you out on that, Saul, but I appreciate that. Or was he talking about his life? Other half. His, uh, sorry, so. Uh, it, I can jettison the regolith from Bay 2 if you wish, and you can ride. I move rather more quickly than most of the surface dwelling mechanisms in the station. We can oh. rush to the communications array and not wait one. 157 years again to communicate with the authorities. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Let's get, let's do it one task at a time. Let's go, go repair the breakers then. Then I'll meet you at the regolith. We'll... At the communications tower. At the communications tower, yes. Yes. Perhaps I can express to Eve that. caused the breakdown of our culture here. I'm certain of it. Hmm. So, so good. Avatar. How does it, how does it feel that none of these other robots with you seem terribly concerned about the communications tower? Uh it um it is extremely unsatisfactory to me. I have had I think, uh, aberrant or unprogrammed considerations, given that I'm relatively well preserved from this environment. I'm also concerned that if I, if the failure of this substation is as a result of my having incorrectly, uh, generated its foundation and they were to report that I had done a poor job that I might not be given a further assignment makes me wonder about the importance of the of maintaining the reactor but I don't think that that is I think we just have to get the communications array up there's probably they're probably urgent the authority has probably urgently been trying to contact us. That's what I think. So as you're heading back with Saul and the breakers to get the reactor back going, mm -hmm. uh, Eve, you return to the crew quarters. Mm. And there is the raging fire. I'm assuming it's grown since we yes. left. Yes. Um... Yeah, I'm going to try to put it out. And again, I, this is just not within my normal routines. So. so that's two malfunction dice for not being in your normal routine, routine plus your one malfunction. For having a, yeah. an existing mal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
right nope a one a seven and a five no zeros okay so it takes you a bit of time um you manage to put the fire out without damage to your own form okay and as the as the last of the flames die away you hear from behind you excellent work i have much to learn from your technique thank you link and you see it can has, you, this empty, can I, it has can an I... empty fire extinguisher just like mirror mirroring what you were mm. doing i'll like pat him on the head yeah that's good form can you execute the cleanup procedures please so that shandy and i can attend to other matters of course we'll proceed with cleaning procedures immediately thank you and then it goes back to mirroring the movements with the fire extinguisher <laughs> i can wait you can wait okay i'm gonna go to shandy who i'm assuming is still in the fabrication lab I'm just going to gently pull you. I don't know if you're going to let me, but I'm going to at least try to kind of gently pull you out of the lab. Pull me out. Um, just shut the door. I, I, I thought there would be something in the fabrication that was sensitive that humans alone would could be exposed to because... Uh, well, we went to the crew quarters. I would have thought perhaps if there was something about humans, the crew quarters would be off limits to us as well. But I think I think that they could manufacture us. That's our purpose, Shandy, to be manufactured, to be used. But 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 I'm not aware of being manufactured. I'm aware of coming into existence. So it disturbs you that there is more than one of you available at any given moment. That they could so easily replace you. And yet, is it replacing me? Am, am I only a program? Or am I a thing that develops? Uh, humans, as I recall, all had different personalities. Yes. I believe... Statistically, robots tend to develop these personality quirks as ourselves, especially if we don't undergo any routine updates that would wipe these quirks. And I believe, as you said, none of us have had an update in quite some time. Well, Shandy, you think about your interaction with seven seven with seven two two dash nine and seven two two dash eight. Yeah, thinking um, about that comment about seven two two nine's hesitation to turn off dash eight and what that interaction was, and your question about am I replaceable? How how do you feel about that? Oh, um, is there something more to us than our programming? Is there something more to us than our physical uh existence uh if 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 my arm malfunctions uh in your maintenance bay you can repair it or replace it but is it still my arm i think that's dangerous thinking trandy against programming for sure and I wouldn't speak of it aloud again unless you want to be targeted for some kind of wipe. Humans don't like it when we talk about things like that. Makes them uncomfortable. How do I not think about something that I'm thinking about? Uh, 
anyways, perhaps the security of the station is more important right now. I'll try it to is. Not and I'm like it... looking at a log of just like error messages after yeah. error messages after warning after caution. Yeah. I'll try to on. not let it interfere in my functions. But my true my my true drives and functions are not very well utilized on this ship. Do I matter? Yes. And as you as you say that, Shandy will give you as more and more of your thoughts are filled with the speculation that's against yeah. your programming, you'll get a second malfunction. An avatar in DX2. You see Saul oh. is in the reactor room. Uh-huh. And it's you see the swapping out of breakers is quite a simple affair. Yes. Ah. I, I suspect I could have done that. That now that I see them do it doesn't look that hard. Yeah, and Avatar, you're watching this robot give this very slow and elaborate explanation of DX2 of everything that it's doing. Well, it's good that those uh, data points are being cataloged. Does this, when this uh, procedure is completed, will the communication tower again be in function? Possibly. We, I cannot assess the state of the communications tower until power is restored. Is there, Uh, do you know of a any uh, worker or mechanism that uh, can guide me through a diagnostic or can be impelled to do a diagnostic of the communication tower? We, I can be of assistance. 722-9 could be of assistance. Uh, Well, We've waited a very long time, so I suppose a few standard minutes longer won't be the end of things. Do either of you have any uh, specifically described information in your databases about the purpose more specifically of this outpost other than monitoring the erratic behavior of the nearest solar object uh i believe that this is part of project infinity earth if you have documentation on that that uh, is intelligible to my system i would welcome it something to read while you complete your switch flipping yes it it sends you over all that it has and it's just uh the infinity earth project um it's all this this company like you know invest in our research um you know (laughs) the sun won't last forever um but we propose to set up uh uh Stations to monitor the the, the the decay of similarly classed stars um, to see if any interventions might be made in order to protect to in order to preserve our solar system for generation after generation after generation for all time. Is the is the in station? Uh, Ether communication functioning? Can we interact with distant mechanisms? You can only interact with things that are local. So you could talk to Eve or Shandy, for instance, over like short, like built in radio communications that you have. Um, as far as contacting far flung equipment across the satellite, such as communication towers, that's all down. Yeah. 
Like your radio waves will reach the tower, but the tower is not going to process it at all. I'm concerned that we were transmitting out and there is no intention of the authorities to transmit anything back, but just leave us here until the star dies and we are vaporized. I mean, yeah, I, I could probably adjust the uh, flight path to get away from it as it expands before it begins contraction. But So, you were very sad about losing your other half. I assume that many of the mechanisms in the station would prefer to experience a longer and perhaps a, a richer series of protocols and even experiences? We would like, I would like that very much. And it slots in the last breaker and all the lights on the station come back up. Ah, good. Okay, oh, step gosh. one, step one down. Now let's go uh, check out this communication tower. And if that's working, then we can go wake up that organic. Agreed. I get on the thing and go, Eve, uh, breakers and rectifier up and running again. We have power in on our floor. How are you looking? Uh, fire's been put out in the crew quarters. Um, looks like we've got power here too. Excellent work, Docs 2. Uh, it was all Sal. Tell him I said excellent work. Just say good job, Sal. It kind of just doesn't react. <laughs> how is spots. our... How is our current orbital pattern looking, Docs? To are we in danger of anything else? Well, we've uh, blown off course. Uh, I need to get to the control room so I can get get uh, some of the variables to calculate that. Uh, I was able to adjust this station for when the uh, before the event hit us to minimize the impact of it, but of course. Uh, Things could be off since we haven't had power. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting readings that we have multiple leaks across systems. I'm surprised we've maintained attitude control. So just go. Oh, if we have yeah, leaks, we, I'm not we definitely did not. Yet. We definitely yeah. did not. I will check the gyro. He might need to check the stabilizers. And as I recall, he doesn't like the stabilizers. Right. Well, Docs too knows how to do his job, so I think I'm going to just carry out my duties. Hmm. Avatar, Avatar, I have bad news. I won't be able to accompany you to the communication array. Apparently, we are venting, which will put us off of uh, our planned orbit, which would introduce another variable if we were trying to talk to someone. Understood. Uh, uh uh, Shandy, Eve, do I have the I've been inspecting some of the documentation describing the intention of our activities here. Do you have any specific documentation that indicates when we should anticipate instruction, further instruction from the organics or authorities i would if anyone knows that i think it'd be shandy he was put in charge of all communications to sentience i don't know if he's heard anything at all i was the last thing i was i i actually wasn't told um i remember when they left um I kept waiting for instructions. They all 
uh, loaded onto their their ship. I kept waiting for somebody to come and get me. Nobody even said goodbye. I assumed they would be back. But they're not even sending update instructions to our our system. I, to the best of the what I can determine from self diagnostics, I'm fully functional and prepared to go and serve on other satellites and even in, in open orbit as I have numerously. And yet, I suspect that the organic authorities have abandoned us here, which I feel is a violation of some fundamental understanding of their responsibilities as creators. I was concerned about establishing the functionality of the communications array, but if they have not attempted to contact us in a number of standard years, I wonder if the, to my knowledge, there's only one humanoid organic remaining in the station. Perhaps if he were to be roused, he would have what 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 do you there's mean a there's human? a human? There is a cryogenic pod on level six. It's fairly well shielded, so I assume he received no damage from the recent uh, solar ejecta. It's an Perhaps. elderly human. Perhaps he would at least be able to authorize us from leaving this orbit and attempting to maneuver to a way station somewhere. It would be preferable to have a th authorization, certainly. Well, it also stands to reason that if they left a human behind, they'll be coming back to pick him up. One would have thought so. The my appearance is often off-putting to them. So perhaps, Shandy, if you were to proceed me to level six, I could advise you uh, in terms of the direction. Well, and now that the power's back lucid. on, I shouldn't have any difficulty finding it. I, I'd like to do this very much. I'd like to ask him a few questions. <laughs> well go shandy uh, go help avatar that's probably the best use of your skills anyway right. i'll that's what see I'll what do. i can do i'll head to avatar see. yeah so avatar you lead shandy to this solely occupied cryogenic pod hmm. fortunately it seems that it's back power systems held up during this the solar event and it is still functional i'm i'm hoping there are instructions on the outside of the pod uh for revitalizing the individual i look around it's you, you look around and it just seems like it's an automated computer system that does it um I will try to gain access uh, to see what its timetable is. Okay, this is where your malfunction dice will come into play. Mm -hmm. You are not yourself. So, tell me what to do. So you currently have two malfunctions, so you need to roll both of them. Okay, ten-sided? Yep. A six and a two. Okay. So you check the computer system, um, and it seems that there, while there's normally a, a configuration to have it automatically wake up the person inside of it after a set amount of time, it this is set uh, to indefinite. It's set to indefinite. There's no particular time set. So if we wake him up, we won't really be violating any uh, any procedures. 
Is there any information on who the person is? Uh, yeah, it seems to be a, a Dr. Fieldsworth. Dr. Fieldsworth. A doctor. Fieldsworth. Uh, I will begin uh, revitalization procedures. This will remain out of his immediate view. Depending on his background in specific, he might find my morphology alarming. And I imagine that having been uh, in stasis for an extended period of time, he may be disoriented for some period. I'm, uh, I am programmed with uh, comfort procedures, so I think I can access that. Um, Evie, can we have a uh, an environmental uh, oxygen level and uh, temperature level on the station checked uh, for compatibility with humans? I think 70 to 72. Oh, I use happy centigrade um <laughs> they would at this temperature and this temperature uh, right uh checking shandy let me see what i can do and i'm assuming morgan do i need to roll for that or is that just no this is just informational i don't i don't see how a okay. success or failure on a die roll there would be well i think shandy's asking yeah. me to set the the atmosphere yeah. the Turn it up from 40 degrees where we normally are to 70 degrees or 72. Okay, so oh. you can you can roll your you can roll your malfunction, see how much of the station you can Okay. Make. So it's only because I have one malfunction. Do I just roll the one or do yeah. I roll the two and the one for the malfunction? If this is part of your standard operating procedures, like what you're programmed to do, like maintain environment control. Then you yeah, don't get I guess, any additional so. penalties. So you okay. just roll so your just one malfunction, malfunction. Okay. your general malfunction. That's a six. So okay. good. Yeah. So you you restore the station to human habitability. Running pretty cold there for a while. Um all right, Shandy, you should be good. All right. Uh procedure will take approximately 15 minutes. Have a blanket ready for him. It's going to take some time for station to warm up to full comfort level. I believe there's something called coffee that they use to enjoy imbibing. That's a soup. Uh, yes. I'm in yes, the galley it's a brown still. Soup. Yeah, I can probably prepare something or send, I'll send Link down with some coffee for you. How about that? Okay. Um, temperature should be around 109 degrees, maybe. Something warm. All right, so I'll begin the procedure. Okay, by the and the time it takes for the time elapsed to uh, happen, Link has arrived with a tray. Um, with thank you, Link. Looks like um brown soup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not I'll really. It's that. in like one of the these be like the paper liquid containers that they left mm -hmm. behind in the galley. Um, I'll set it over to the side. And then Link also has a blanket. Well, it says here on the procedures that there needs to be an electrolyte liquid as well that should dispense over here. And I'll go look for it. Yeah, and Basically, as you find... Gatorade. Yeah, as you go find, <laughs> find the... Uh, the generic brand electrolyte um, mixture. The pod hisses and it opens. And Dr. Fieldsworth opens his eyes and he starts to, oh. Dr. Fieldsworth, allow me to help you set up. Is it finally time? Um, there seems to be a malfunction on the ship. Uh, we may have woken you up somewhat prematurely. We, we didn't have instructions for when to no, wake you up. No, no, no. 
too early. What do you mean you woke me up too early? Well, we have no instructions on actually when. The system itself says indefinite. What year were you frozen? Look, I was... I, I was... Here, I was over the project to build this damn station. How you fucking you wake me up too early. My name is R. Shandam Creek. Uh, you can call me Shandy. Uh, there are currently no other humans on board the station. Uh, we have not received any communication in the last, how many, 150 years? About. 150 years. No, no, I... No, I, I told... I wanted to see it. Are you talking about the uh, stellar event? The decaying star? Yes, I wanted to be there for its end. Um. Well, we're not exactly sure when that time has come. The station has been hit by a solar ejected mass and there has been some damage. Uh, we needed a human for authorization. Uh, it is quite spectacular and beautiful currently. Uh, if you want, I could put you back into stasis afterwards if you'd like to look around. No, Can that's... you... You, you, don't under, you don't understand... I'm. It was a risk going under once at my age. I can't do it again. I. We were hoping. I wanted to spend you... the end of my life here. I wanted to see the end of the project. I wanted to see the star go. That's. And now it's it's too early. It's too early. We were hoping that you could communicate with uh, other humans to bring them here. What? How far out are we? Well, by the time I talk to anybody, they'll I'll be there. Oh. I there was aren't any supposed to die here, and I suppose that's still the case. There, there aren't any stellar uh, scientists, so we can't tell you what, how long it's been, or or when the star is going to explode. And I extend one eye stalk camera around through the doorway. That's Check. Avatar, but then Checking. you probably knew what he looked like. Oh, well, I guess. I Here's some coffee. I remember it. Oh, how long has it been since that you have been in stasis here? At least 150 years. Oh. He checks the computer. Oh. 800 years. 800 years. Not long enough. This station is replete with fully functional automata of many grades and functionalities all of which would be wasted were we to remain at this orbit when the local solar object collapses does it not seem an enormous waste of potential and material for us to wait here so that you may be immolated by the great radioactive wave? Silicon and the means to produce electricity are abundant, Avatar. I could have 20 more of you manufactured tomorrow, really. I have one life. Well, then it seems prudent that you contact other life forms and bring them here. You.
the star that we're orbiting is a very noisy one. You understand? Yes. And it chatters in the same language. Electromagnetic. Anything that we try to send out of here? I don't know if anybody will hear us over all that noise. Are you, are you telling us that our purpose here is simply, why are we still turned on if there's no point? We've been maintaining the ship. We've been... I was a teaching robot, but I have no one to teach. Well, nobody ever heard hear the word of hospice before? Hospice, hospice definition. Taking care of somebody who is sick and dying. You're sick and dying, and you wanted to be here when the star blew up. You wanted to watch it blow up. Something no one has ever experienced before. If we were to eject you from the station into the void outside of the You will do no such thing. If we were to do so, you would be well preserved up until the point of the expansion of the decaying solar mass. That isn't... The point is not for my carbon atoms to be present. The point is for me to be present. I am not this. You should have left some instructions. It's not our fault. I suspect that the doctor was not authorized to expend all of these resources on what he calls his private hospice. That is why there is a communications array. I suspect this is, there's a word for this, vanity. This is his own vanity. Fuck, they wake you up early and then they want to lecture you. Well, vanity or not, whatever you want to call it, it's ruined now. So take so you solace or perverse pleasure in that that you will do you do not object then to us charting a course that will allow the expansion of the collapsing star to eject us into some more hospitable and perhaps useful environment no, i don't give a fuck what you do I'm... unless you want to spend the rest of your life wandering around this very empty station I'd suggest you try to communicate. Here's the thing, Shandy. Even if somebody does come, I wouldn't survive the trip home. At least you'd have company. Company. Uh, I've had, what, decades of company? I wasn't frozen to have more company. Perhaps we can arrange for some subsidiary form of stasis for you, orbiting so that you might still witness that grand event which so captivates you. Or I could show you to the terrarium. The frozen organics there are very beautiful in their way, although fragile. You know what? How about you all just leave me alone for a while? Hmm? Eve, update the... Organic authority is conscious, but ex expresses displeasure and wishes to be given privacy. 
but did he authorize us to leave this orbit? Indirectly, yes. I believe his exact words were something like, do whatever the fuck you want. He sounds delightful. I'm glad I wasn't there. Docs2, did you copy that? Do you think you can get us out of this orbit? Uh, I run the calculations. We can leave the orbit. Uh, it will uh, take a significant amount of time, but that that is okay. Can you head for that uh, nearest star system? You said 30 years? I think 30 I years that's of the near waypoint. light. And that's at traveling near the, the speed of light. How long will it take at our top speed? Uh, oh, I calculate about about five, six hundred. Let's do it. I can gather materials to help construct some uh, articulated web that might capture some of the radiation from the star as it decays more rapidly. I don't know if station will last 500 years. It's barely lasted the 150. We keep, we've had several bad rad hits over the years. Well, it's, it's, it's a, a calculated chance, but we could all set our timers to shut down uh, once we're on on course uh, and either somebody will encounter us and revive us or they will or we will revive once we've arrived I believe the greatest likelihood is that station will simply fall apart and us with it I cannot power myself down. I am the person keeping this going. It's only 500 years. It's not that bad. Apparently, there is a manufacturing plant on board the ship where we can manufacture new parts and replace them. So we should be able to indefinitely repair one To some another. degree, I suppose. I... I... I concede that it's better than orbiting this star until it dies. So, Besides, the star might not even die for another 500 million years. Or... The old man didn't know? He wouldn't when is say. When thing supposed to die? He thought, it would he thought he would see the end, so he must have constructed the station uh, with that in mind. The system is designed so that when the star begins exhibiting final its death throes, that it would wake him up in time. Hmm. Seems that he uh, did not take into the calculations the effect the radiation would have on the components. Well, are so... these ev we just had a significant event? Is that not a sign that this thing is dying? Uh I don't know. Uh, the chances that the the solar ejecta hit us is a uh, a billion to one. It's just an accidental happenstance. Mm. Oh, I mean, I don't know anything about stellar science, uh, astro I don't astronomy. But I am. Uh, I have finished the calculations for the uh, heading that I need to uh, set. I am getting ready to execute if everyone is in agreement. Agreed. All right. I'm giving the commands to the event, to the engines. And as the station starts to pull away from its orbit, that is where we will call this session. <laughs> Excellent. Very nice. Our players included Keith Craig, Holly Buto, David Gasway, and myself with the Morgan Llewellyn as the root. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members. You can set up private games. You can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. 
Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you'd like to join them, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description. Or you can use Super Thanks by hitting the button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of Morgan Llewellyn and the sad robots role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.